If you're in the early days of working on a game or thinking about starting to work on a game, I want to help you answer the question in this video, should you build an editor for yourself? I'll be honest and say in the past few games that I've been a part of, building an editor has been the best decision we've made through the whole process, and I want to show you why. We're going to cover the fact that your game needs a ton of content and how making it efficient to add that content is a good idea. We're going to talk about maybe in your code separating application concerns and content concerns. We'll cover how nice your editor tool really needs to be, like how much time you should really put into it. And finally, just for fun, I'm going to give you a tour of some editors that I've built over the years, as well as the one I'm working on now with the tech stacks that I use. Now, editor here might seem like kind of an overly fancy term. Really what we're talking about is just building tools for yourself, whether they're big or small, that create data that your game will read. The key to all this is making it really easy to work on your game. You don't want anything in your workflow to be tedious or hard to support going forward. All of those little things can lead to burnout and uh, maybe put you at risk of not finishing the project. And that's bad. We want to finish the project. We want people to play our games. So let's do everything we can to make the game easy to work on. So first topic, content is king. As developers, uh, sometimes we can get shiny object syndrome in the sense that uh, it's often tempting to want to work on a new feature or to refactor code that's already there to make it perfectly abstracted and all that. It's really easy to forget that often the best thing we can do for our players is just add content to the game, give them something to play. Now, most of the projects I've worked on have been top-down RPGs. So for me, it's been things like adding dialogue, adding new maps, adding new worlds. Uh, for action games or platformers, it might be adding new enemies or combinations of enemies, using the same existing game pieces, but put them in different combinations. It can be kind of a drag to create content manually, whether you're baking it into the code or writing it into configuration files yourself. Uh, more on that in a second. Sometimes, especially when you don't have the inspiration of what the level should really be, you know, something needs to be there, but you're not sure exactly what it should be. Having tools that help you create content quickly or automate the creation of content can really get you over productivity bumps. In our upcoming game, Happy Grumps, built with Game Maker, Glenn built a tile map editor directly into the game that's only visible when a development flag is turned on. Glenn can run the game and then use these tools to place objects on the fly, try them out, and then if he likes the result, he can hit a button, and that button commits the idea directly back into the game's code. And yeah, it took a little bit of time to get this idea into the game, uh, but now it only takes Glenn seconds instead of hours to add content to the game, so the investment has totally paid off. Another huge advantage of having an editor is that it allows you to quickly react to user feedback. Let me tell you a quick story about something that happened when we launched our first game, Danger Crew. The first chapter of the game had a layout that looked like this. You're supposed to go around this way, come out here, and then you could either go this way to continue forward or this way if you wanted to backtrack and go back to where you came from. We received some rather vocal feedback from people that got to this point and accidentally went the wrong way because it wasn't really clear which way was the way forward. They got really frustrated and this is really early in the game so they weren't really invested in it yet and they quit. Womp womp. Using our editor, we were able to place a person right here to basically block people from going the wrong way. It also gave us another opportunity to add a little quirky dialogue to the game because there was another person around to say something. And that bit of feedback really helped us form an opinion on how the level design should work. Whereas we continued to add content to the game, we realized a lot of chapters were better when they were just linear, while other chapters were more open on purpose, where we drop you in the middle and give you a laundry list of things to do that you could do in any order that you wanted. Before we made this change, because of the feedback, this first chapter was kind of trying to do both and doing both poorly. And anyway, all we had to do is make the change, hit save, and then it was deployed and out there for people to play. There was another time where people were telling us a battle was way too hard, where people were losing over and over and over again to the point where it was just unfair. And so all we had to do is pop into our editor, pull up the battle section, tune a few things, and then let people try it again. Even though these are two really small examples, these sorts of things came up over and over and over again throughout the years that we were working on the game. Having an editor saved us so much time, and we're gonna see that editor later in this video. Next, let's talk about organizing your game code to accept editor data. When coding your game, try to keep in mind the difference between application concerns and content concerns. These aren't perfect definitions, but let's just say for the sake of the video that application concerns are how your game handles handles certain events. For example, when a character steps on a piece of ice, how does their movement change? When a character is hit with a projectile or something like that, how far back do they bounce? What are the physics like? Usually those are things that are handled by your game's kind of engine code. Content is what events are in the game and where are they? Like where are those patches of ice in the room? 
how many enemies are in this map? What type of enemies are they in the map? When I step on this space, I get transferred to a different part of the game. Where do I get transferred to? If we think about content as clear configuration like that, then we can easily take those instructions and import them from a different source, like an editor tool. So for example, let's consider an NPC text box. The application's code might handle how the text box appears on screen, like maybe the little animation that pops up, what it looks like, maybe the ability for you to hit a key to kind of speed through to the end of the text. That's all good application concern, but you don't want to lock yourself into a corner of having the actual text that's displayed in the text box baked into that text box component. You may have like hundreds of text boxes in your game throughout the whole thing, right? And so it's important that you build the text box in a way that it can accept instruction on what to show. And even if you don't build an editor tool on day one, that's totally fine. At least you've left that door open for yourself in the future. The pieces that should be customizable by the editor will vary based on the needs of your game. You want to be careful not to over-engineer every single detail because you'll sink way too much time into it and then probably not even end up using all of those things that you make. But you do want to be cognizant on all the little details that may change from usage to usage in your game or instance to instance. Now let's talk about how nice the editor really needs to be. So the thing is, this is an app that you're probably gonna spend a lot of time in. Uh, it should be nice enough for you to use and maybe not a total train wreck because you're gonna be spending a lot of time in here, uh, but it probably doesn't need to be nice enough for other people. If you're working on a small team, hopefully you have a team agreement and everybody is kind of aligned on what the fidelity of the tools should be like. If you plan to open up your editor for like anybody to use, maybe an editor feature in your game, like I uh, think like Mario Maker or something like that, that's amazing and a cool idea. Um, at that point, it feels more like a feature of the actual game, and so of course you want to tidy it up as best you can. Mine usually start completely unstyled uh, for a long time, the bare minimum, just to use the thing and, and get the data written. I start to tidy them up as soon as the feature set gets so complex that the unstyled UI gets in my way, like it's confusing to look at. If you've seen other videos that I have on this YouTube channel, you know that we talk a lot about building things from the ground up with JavaScript, because we're just starting from scratch with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. For those kinds of projects, we don't really have anything out of the box to work with, so of course we build a lot of things from the ground up. But if you're using a game engine, building your own tools doesn't necessarily mean that you have to start from scratch. These engines often have ways to extend the built-in editor. Like for example, Godot has the tool keyword that allows you to run your own code in the actual editor. And of course, the tools that you need to build are going to depend on your game and what you're trying to achieve and what hiccups and workflow you have right now. So it's going to be on you to decide kind of where in the fidelity spectrum the tools need to be. For me personally, I've never regretted putting the extra time into the tools that I'm using. It almost always pays off because I, again, I spend so much time in them and we're going to see one of those right now. Okay, now we're gonna take a quick look at the editor that we use to build the game Danger Crew. Uh, it's kind of fun for me to look at this. It's just like a blast from the past. You can see that the, the project name was Danger Studio 2017, which is probably the year that we started the repo, but uh, we definitely used it for years after that. So that's kind of funny. What we have here is just a glorified JSON editor. And so you can see that uh, there's uh, some UI here. This is just a React app. Create React app was the build system, just like Danger Crew the game was. In this editor layout here, I can, uh, I'm can i looking at one chapter of the game, and a chapter is just like a slice of the game. This game was really linear. So you play through a chapter, and then you move on to the next chapter, but there was no way to go back. It was very just kind of like straightforward game. Um, and... In here, each chapter has a bunch of maps in it, and that's what you see on the left sidebar here. So as I click through them, you can see that this middle part is changing out. Um, this is an individual map here, and then each map has a little grid editor. See these black squares are walls. That's where you can't walk. Uh, we did something really similar in the Pizza Legend series. And over here, I've got this wall opacity slider, so I can like kind of slide it down. And then you see it update over here, where you can see all the uh, things in the map now, because the wall you know, um, this is just nice to know like where the walls are placed. Up here, I have some tools for different objects that can be placed in each map. So if I go to like this map here uh, and I choose the person tool, I can double click and then that'll place a person here, uh, just kind of with the default skin, but I can click this person and an inspector pops up and then I can kind of rename um, this person, uh, choose what appearance they have. So which skin they are, like I can I'll make them the Drew skin or the Glenn skin. There's a story point section here, which basically determines when they should show up in the game. Like if you've completed a certain thing, 
uh, and they should only show up when you've completed a certain thing. We have this required story points field. Again, very similar. If you saw the Pizza Legend series, we implemented all this stuff there. Uh, but this is just kind of a nice visual way to edit all of that data. But anyway, you can come through and um, pick a story point. So like if you found switch one, then Drew will appear. See, now the editor doesn't think I've done that yet. And so it, it um, puts, puts him off the map. Um, but if I go ahead and delete that, he snaps back in place. You can also move the positions around of people. Uh, like if I kind of move them around here. And you can see there's UI here. It's like a little nice, but it's not that nice. You see totally unstyled um, select boxes and the spacing's funny and there's just a lot of stuff crammed. It definitely needs some design love, but it's just enough to be usable. Because again, it was just me and Glenn using this thing. Anyway, so I'll close out of that. Um, again, there's like all kinds of chapters in here. We really use this to create a lot of content really quickly. And while it took a while to develop this UI, we spent so many hours using the app that it was totally worth it. And I want to call it too that it did not start out with all of these features. It started very bare bones, very unstyled. But as we discovered that we needed certain things, we just took the time to add them in here. And then over time, it grew into you know what it is now. Uh, there's also this section here with all the journal stories in the game where you can um, basically anytime you like complete a quest journal entry, uh, your journal updates in the game, and then there's like text that that appears. So all that text in the journal can be authored right here. You click this edit button and like edit the text. And then when you're all done editing content for the chapter, you can just come up here and hit this save button. This thing is just, again, it's a glorified JSON editor. So when you hit the save button, it's going to um, write a bunch of JSON to my machine. I can then commit that with Git and um, use this other button, prod bridge, to move that JSON file into the game's repository. And so while it would be possible to like come in and tinker all of the configuration details of all these people by hand, um, that would take a long time. And I know me, I know I'd mess something up there and it would cause a lot of bugs. And so for us, it just turned out to be a really nice time investment to build this tool and then have it. So now even years later, like as I'm recording this now in uh, 2022, we can still come in and add things to the game or change things. So now I hope your mind is spinning with ideas on ways that you can create your own tools for the game that you're working on or want to start working on. One word before I go, if you are working on a game, or again, if you're thinking about working on a game, you should join our Discord and tell us about it. We have a really cool supportive group of people in our Discord server that are helping each other finish games. If you need someone to bounce ideas off of or um, maybe get some help on implementation of a feature you're trying to do, maybe you wanna show off the cool editing tools that you're creating for yourself, our Discord's an awesome place to be. The invite for that is in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, I really appreciate it when you hit the like button and then subscribe for more game dev videos if you're into this kind of thing. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see the games and the tools that you create until then, I'll see you next time.